All right, just started up my hard drive again. Okay, this is part two today for <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I didn't turn it by. <laughs> oh, crap. Uh, this is part two for the day here on a Saturday. Super chill. Uh, Dono catch up some cheesy wheel uh, in a little bit. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have time for Soma. I think I'll do Soma tonight. I'll come in for a few hours. I was going to try to do it after that, but... That was kind of close, though. I did okay. Did I do okay? Was it well done? I kind of like, whoa. You know? That was, that's kind of funny. Because I'm funny that way. All right. We're back. Next. Ooh, hiccup. Sorry. Next up is um, um, Baikoya. Are you still here, my friend? Baikoya wants us to listen to some music from... Whoops, let me get my Mikey here. Music from uh, World of Warcraft. All right. How about some World of Warcraft here? Let's see what we got here. Uh, this one is called uh, Tempest's Wake, uh, World of Warcraft Cataclysm. And uh, where are you, Bokoya? Are you still here? Well, if not, you know where you can go when you catch this on the uh, VOD channel on YouTube. Okay. So uh, his message is, man, I slept on this uh, from World on, uh, uh, I'm sorry, World of Warcraft. It's played in the Ar Arthi Highlands. Oh, I think it sounded like that. Okay, well, we're doing this. This is coming from the World of Warcraft, and the name of the track is Tempest Wake. All right. Kind of came in hard. Maybe it was the second part or something. Section that da 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 da. Oh, beautiful. Like, maybe like opening up the big gates and getting the first look of darkness or something. Crows in the background. Letting the French horns hold down the. Uh, melody on this. It sounds more melodic than arranging. Is this in gameplay or is this a cutscene? Or a scene transition.
beautiful moving piece, dark, heavy, gnarly, uh, but with a lot of like supporting emotion though, like this last like 35, 40 seconds that we heard. Uh, I don't know, I had asked earlier, nobody piped in, so maybe nobody knows if whether or not this piece of music was to a cut scene or maybe uh, end titles or opening or something. Um, but emotionally, I mean, as I'm listening to it, I was, I was thinking, well, if this is part of game music, it might be a discernible loop point, but it wasn't. It was crafted completely for one particular uh, scene, it seems like to me. Um, big, huge orchestra. I love the whole vibe of everything. A, a lot of the end also leaned, uh, leaned a lot on the flute, which I love that tone as well. Um, I have to listen to more of World uh, of Warcraft because I have uh, quite a few people from um, Patreon that have actually uh, asked me to listen like to the whole OST. But um, is an area in the game. Ah. Oh, I see. Okay. Because it didn't seem like there was anything that was necessarily going on that was like, um, you know, trying to achieve something. There was no anxiety building it, but there was a darkness in it. That's why at a certain point, while I'm listening to it, I'm saying, well, is it, it kind of seems like maybe the energy or the character is getting to a place where he slowly opens some gates and sees, you know, the true darkness he has to confront. But it didn't seem like there was any anxiety, you know, banging, you know, and, and, and power of the, uh, or of, the, um, of the writing you know, to match anything that was, you know, happening very, you know, intensely. Yeah, it was absolutely, it was ginormously huge. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is that, Hedelberg? Different songs. Oh, I see. It'll play occasionally. Are you saying like at, like at random it'll come in? Kind of like what they do in Minecraft every just now and then something comes in. Unless there's, you're in play on something. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, nonetheless, it was a beautiful piece, and uh, uh, like I said, I've got to listen to the whole. Eventually, I'm going to sit here one day and just go through one of the... How many uh, games have they released? Or the World of Warcraft, is this like a, already just a one thing, or is there a, a two and a three or different um, releases throughout uh, their, their um, franchise? I don't know. I saw the list. It was pretty big. Uh, okay. Who's up next? Let's see. Uh, speaking of uh, Mel Choirblade, we're on to you now, my friend. And we are going to go and we are going to be listening to uh, Game OST Lightning Returns Final Fantasy 8. I'm sorry, 13. <sighs> sorry, sorry. The Roman numerals, everything's colliding in my brain right now. My bad. Uh, so this one is called Midnight Eternal. And uh, Mel Choirblade is saying, Hey, Jeeves, it's an interesting track that gives me horror jazz. Like, okay, I like that. It's kind of like a goth jazz, maybe, vibes. Uh, just in time for spooky season. Hope you enjoy. I know I will. Let's go. Of a spooky Stan Getz, especially with that upright bass sound, yeah.
Oh man, that was a great narrative you typed out there. Yes. <laughs> when that dame walked right in before she did, I knew there'd be trouble. God, this is beautiful. down just the little light stroke of the brush on the snare. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little section here. medium of gaming and anime and you hear such diversity that was such a blessed piece for me Mel Choir played it was absolutely amazeballs uh, na, Naoshi I'm sorry forgive me mi, uh, Mizuta Naoshi Mizuta I take it is that the pianist or the saxophone player I don't know I'm sorry forgive me that was just so wonderful and so beautiful and on so many different levels for me, I just didn't, I, I lost what I was doing here. I was just listening to everything from the little, you know, unique undertones uh, from the upright bass, the delicate aspect of how the drum, uh, the drummer, just like in that one little section there when the bass solo's kind of having its, its moment, just oh, it was only there on the one. Pa, pop, you know. That was great. That was just great. And I know that this, that this stream has such an eclectic um, crew of people that listen to so much different music that the best thing for me about this whole thing is that it opens up, you know, new doors to new different types of, uh, <coughs> of different types of music to new listeners and 
that's that's the only reason why I even come back and do this, you know, do the Twitch, is that that opportunity to have have you guys share with me that reverberates and shares throughout, you know, the playlist or what we do here. So yay, you know, that's just absolutely mind numbing, and there's, um, that's that's why I'm so just as an old composer who who has pretty much hung up my skill set for young composers and stuff even though i'm still getting work somehow um i love the fact that i really wasn't I, i'm going to confess something here um i'm not that good uh of a composer when i when i listen when I, I i'm good i'm good enough for the work that i do and this is a humble statement this isn't me beating myself down this is an imposter syndrome i just know where i sit with my skill set and what my st strong points are <clears throat> but I'm really blessed that I had this opportunity to be the composer that I became so that I could really glory in the orchestrations and compositions and musicianships of the musicians that, you know, I can't be that. I can't be that. I can't be that. I can think and hear it, but it, it, it give, it, my, my life as a composer has given me enough uh, uh, listening skill set, orchestral listening and stuff, so that I can enjoy pieces of music, you know, the way you just saw me feel about this, you know, and um, to me, that's a blessing. I, I play average piano, average drums, average guitar, singing average, average ukulele, average bass, you know, but there's enough of that information that I marinate in that when I listen to incredible pieces of work, I can get lifted by it, you know and just uh, amazed balls by it. So anyhow, I don't know if that was much of a confession. <coughs> maybe, maybe it was a confession to me. Because <laughs> my works are not really that memorable. I, I do have a couple pieces of stuff that I've put up on original stuff on the Decomposer Lounge. I think one or two tracks or a couple covers. I think the closest I get to being anywhere near original is by covering a song, but just adding my original angle to it you know like i did the the zeppelin track the, the 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 california song it was just my angle using a fretless brace and an ukulele and stuff and and whatever but anyhow um lisa says uh <laughs> that was very nice lisa thank you that was very well written you're right very right <laughs> lisa well said yeah, I'm not, I mean, I, I, I kind of revel in my, in my mediocrities, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, still yet, I find myself, though, sometimes having to overcompose over to feel like I'm making up for something, and then I blow myself out of the box of what I would con con consider approachable music on, on, a, on a wider level, but whatever. Guys, I just went so off on that, I'm so sorry. A little bit of a, an, a, a Jeeb story time about my life's journey, but you know, that's that's the whole thing. You know, what are you gonna do? All right, what do I got next? Mum, uh, mum, 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 mum. Crossface Buffalo, how are ya? Let's see what we got here for Crossface Buffalo. We got here. Uh, oh, I think you brought this last one to us, too, from the game Astrobot. Um, the, the message is, I am Astrobot. I am not really. The song is called Papa Tree. And the message is, in celebration of myself getting all the trophies in Astrobot, you have achieved next level. Uh, here's one of my favorite tracks from the OST. This plays on the level Trunk of Funk where you water a sapling and it grows into the papa tree. The papa tree will then break into the song once fully grown and you climb into the tree and to reach the end of the level. Oh, now I got theater to the mind with this. All right, Crossface, let's go. Papa tree, did I say puppetry? Papa tree, <laughs> here we go. I, I, I ain't no big, ain't no bad, there's no black. 
doubt I move like man I ain't no bush I ain't no sprout I ain't no weed So there is no doubt I ain't no bush I ain't no sprout Oh, you're right, it does, Lisa. <laughs> Interesting. Unique stack on that melody, instrument wise. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Nortrell slipped in there just for that flute line. Definitely does have a Jeff Thor 12 pop to it, doesn't it? So I take it this is when the, when the tree is getting is starting to grow here because the arrangements are starting to lift a little bit. And the unison uh, harmony on that too, and the lead on the melody is really fun. Disco toll. Yummer March. So now you're making your way up through the tree, right? This has that like like early 80s kid show rapping vibe right there, you know? That we just heard with the uh, bot boys. changes are really prefaced on the percussive arpeggiation uh, chord changes. Based on the on the lyrics here, is this like another achievement in climbing a tree? Is that what's happening here in the game? Huh. Look at that bass is just. Oh, now we get discoy with the bass. Oompa 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 loompa oompa oompa.
<laughs> I love the music, the, the music guitar rhythm. The chorded. The lyrics. Those birds were making him angry up there, putting a nest in his hair. I was looking for closed caption. There's no closed caption on here. Bottom is just rapid fire with that whole bass line. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's at the top of the tree now. I don't know. I like the whole thing. I, I like what Ammon said when it was a uh, disco tall. What a fun track. I, everything from Astrobot that has been brought to me has always been a really super fun track. And um, very lighthearted and very, I don't know what the uh, mission of it is. Apparently we got to beat up some uh, birds at the top of the, of the tree. I don't know what it is, but it's, 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 uh, it's always very pop, clean, um, rhythm arrangement, fun kind of vibes through and through. Good melodies, really lighthearted. You know, nothing dark unless maybe I'm just not hearing any of the darker ones or the pieces. But, um, but yeah, just, just like you said, Theris, just always upbeat, always happy. I think I've heard about three, three of them now off of, off of it. And it seems like something that I may want to just kind of check into uh, just for fun. I mean, uh, right now I'm, I just started, I'm at the embryonic beginnings of Soma for the Halloween thing. But this is like something that might be really fun to uh, wrap my head around. Uh, when I need to be uplifted in playing a video game, you know, let alone my Minecraft server. That's always fun. I haven't been even in that for a while, for God's sakes. Hala. Okay, so. Oh, it's only on PS5? Okay, well, I guess I'll never be playing that. Oh, well. I'll live vicariously through uh, YouTube um, uh, playthroughs, I guess. Get, at least get somewhat of an idea. Uh, okay, guys, uh, look, uh, let me see what I got here. I have still a good swath of uh, uh, donos that are dangling here, but I do uh, want to get into some Wheel of Cheese before I dig out. And so that, uh, so let me just run off these names really quick. Great Sage Sun, Next 794, uh, Zeit Logic, Cycloid, S. Dixon, Linkinski, uh, Tempo 127, 
Logan uh, Malos. Uh, let me see. So you guys are on my list. You're in pole position. Um, but I'm going to move on now to my uh, wheel of cheese. But if, if you're new to that little list that I just read off, all the, all the usual suspects know that those tracks do eventually get listened to. And whether I do it here on a stream or I just do a special offline session, be sure that you uh, log in to, I mean, um, sub subscribe to that YouTube channel. For as long as I have it, I got two strikes against it. <laughs> I'm waiting for the third one. So don't forget to check that out, okay? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, so, yeah, that's just... Uh, Ow. <sighs> Sorry. So that's, uh, that's how that'll roll for now. And uh, so uh, let's go ahead and do some Wheel of Cheese. You guys down for some Wheel of Cheese? We've got people lurking in the background that have been hanging out here for a while waiting for Wheel of Cheese. And how much time do I have? Oh, okay. I only have... All right. So let me do this. I'm going to refresh this. Let's bring on the cheese. Let's start off with uh, new cheesy people. Uh, this is usually the first timers here. Hang on for a second. Let me bring this here. Okay, that's not the wheel of cheese. That's last week's uh, how do you do. Um, let me bring this up here. And get uh, okay. And let's see what the new wheel of cheese people looks like. Not too. Oh, wow. Quite a few new folks that did hang out here. <clears throat> so if you see your name here. Uh, Auto supporter, yes. You are new here as well. And you like auto, I take it. I've done a lot of auto here. We have a lot of auto fans. All right, guys, here we go. This is our first uh, spin of our noob cheese. Let's go. Let's see who wins. Looks like we're going to be getting to DJ Abrol Gorbachev. Gondolev. DJ Abrel. All right, well. Here you go. You have won. Let's see what you would like us to listen to. Please remember, if you're first timers, nothing over seven minutes, please. Otherwise, it will not get played because of the fact that, you know, I try to fit in as many as I can here. So let's see what DJ would like. Is an anime called Black Lagoon. Have I done anything from Black Lagoon before, guys? Let's see what we got here. From Black Lagoon, we are be doing. We are be. <laughs> we will be doing a song called Red Fraction. Uh, this is a, a drive mix, so maybe this is a, a redo. Uh, it, oh, it's, he says it right here in his message. It's a remix made by the creator of the song, as I can see. All right, let's do this. And uh, first of all, thanks for coming. And second of all, God, you won on the first spin. Let's go. All right. EDM Gent. I like that filter down. I love this style of engineering on the vocals.
I love the human element that the chunk of the guitar brings into this. God, I like the premise of the game, Judgment. Yeah, it does kind of have a Vocaloid vibe, but not. They're smashing this in uh, side chains. You know, they're keeping the percussion really just straight and square. But it's the accents on their patterns that are making it genty for me. Even though they got this four on the floor kick. There's that little filter sweep weird odd fall blah 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 blah. Love the energy in the track. Uh, absolutely crushed. One question I have briefly is, um, does, if this is part of the anime, is this considered as a song, or, or this was a remix, I'm sorry. This was a remix by the original composer. So this would be a DLC, right? I guess for the game, or was maybe a separate thing. When I listen to this though, and, and, I'm, and I'm hearing you guys say that this is actually part of the anime, um, because I don't know what the original sounds like, I wonder if it's treated like a source cue in the anime. So what are you saying? This is the opening scene that plays before every episode of the anime. But yeah, but is it all five minutes? Like this was a remix, right? Or is it a shorter like intro? Is the original, so I guess judgment, the question I'm asking is, is the original version of this that's actually in the game, is it, is it a little shorter? Because I've just listened to this as a, as a complete like, um, uh, piece of music as a track. It is a re Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. That's that's kind of also the the angle I was looking at, Kyra. That that kind of thing where it's it's a, generally a large piece of music, but then it's used as a source cue. <coughs> so, anyhow, all right. Let's let's continue on. Let's do some uh, queso nuevo. No queso pobre. Let's go for some queso pobre, folks. Uh, DJ or Brail, I, I think you may have left already, but um, um, you know where to find it now. It's going to be on that YouTube channel. All right, guys, here we go. Some queso. Oh, oh my God, that is elementary public school slices of pizza right there. Starvation slices. <laughs> 
All right, that's how many people are in for it. So here we go, guys. Let's spin. What do we got? Who do we get? What do we do? Who is it going to be? No way. Look at you, Mason. All right. Here we go. What's the gator want? The gator would like, uh, uh, let me see here, a TV show, music from a TV show here. And this is called, wow, 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 wow. Okay, the TV show is OK KO, Let's Be Heroes. Uh, the name of the song is Do You Have Any More in the Back? Okay, uh, so the message is, uh, there are brief pauses to separate sections in this. They are not when it stops, so don't end the track for them. Fun fact, the cartoon is, the cartoon this comes from was made by Ian Jones Cordy, the spouse of Rebecca Sugar. Oh, all right. Well, let's go. <laughs> For some reason, I got like Love Boat vibes right there. Miller. Yeah, totally. Don't stop. There's more to it. Welcome to Fantasy Island, uh, Boto Boy. <laughs> There's these little bits of that. What are these breaks about? Oh, here we go. These are hilarious. These are like little stabs and stuff that are actually from the original uh, soundtrack, it sounds like, their score. And this. This is reminding me of some George Michael father figure kind of vibe. I mean, this is a little more abrupt and faster, but... funny these stingers that's what we call it in the composer world these are stingers so establishing scene vibe stuff a little 
little trim at the end. God, it's so unique they would put this out. Like this. Next on Boto Boy. This is when all high five, all the cops are high five. Yay, like, hey, we got the bad guy. God, these are all like transition stingers. jumped in for a quick turnaround. Okay, without a doubt, this was the trippiest listen I've ever listened to on anything I've ever listened to, only because it almost seems like it was an episode. Uh, the composers put in all the episode um, establishing scene, scene fade stingers uh, and turnarounds, very much more reminiscent of the um, uh, uh, the the 30-minute the shows that used to be from the... The, how they used to do it in the 70s and the 80s and stuff. You know, you would occasionally hear the turnaround music in between scenes. A little more dramatic in the, in the 70s than, you know, uh, like, for instance, the theme of, the, of um, Seinfeld was always with that bass. You know, and these are those little bites. I mean, I don't know where in, this is, is about. It's a TV show, I guess. But it's really unique that they would take um, maybe... Um, do you have any more of the black? Maybe that's the name of this episode. Do you have any more in the back? And then they just popped all those stingers out of there, which I thought was great. It's unique to listen to that, at least for folks who might, you know, who are new maybe at the composition world and what composers do. Uh, and when we get assigned, you know, a TV show or something like that, or, or, or something happens where I, sometimes I get hired just to write a package of stingers based off of a theme. You know, so you just have these various levels and stuff. And, and there was two of them that actually were identical, except one, uh, one of them was like maybe four seconds longer with a little bit more of a beefier arrangement to it. But I, I thought that was cool. I was listening to this like, eh, if I was a publisher, I'd be going, maybe. But it was cool to listen to it that way and to be put out like that. I, I don't know who these composers are or how it ended up on this. Um, oh, it's unlisted. Oh, check this out. That was unlisted. So it looks like unlisted links will work in here. <laughs> I guess. Uh, so it's unlisted. I can get, maybe I'll get in trouble for this. Maybe I'll get my third strike and my channel will disappear on the YouTube. But I thought it was great. I thought it was really fun to listen to. <clears throat> yeah, remember the old Batman transitions? It's all the transitions, or it could be scene transition as well. It doesn't have to be an, uh, an, a wraparound at the end or an intro, you know, uh, come in, you know, kind of vibe. So, okay. Uh, ma, ma, ma. Streets of San Francisco. Oh my God, I remember that sound garden. <clears throat> Did you ever? There was a short-lived um, 
kind of Mission Impossible type show. I think it only did like half a season. It was called San Francisco International. It was like a TV show about, you know, working at an airport in the 70s. And uh, that's when that big run of those shows kind of came out. And there was a lot of those turnarounds and kind of vibey things in there as well. Oh, that's right. My dad was a composer for that. Uh, it didn't last long, though. I think, I think he got about eight shows out of that. <coughs> but it was called San Francisco International. I wonder if it's on YouTube. I'm going to look for it. I don't care. I'm looking for it right now. Uh, international TV show, 1970s. Let me see if anything will pop up. Yeah, that's it, the pilot. Oh no, it does exist. Holy crap, my dad was the composer on this one. My God, I've never, I gotta listen to some of this demo. Is there any music on the way? I'm sorry, if my dad was still alive, I'd go, Dad, check it out. You got a bunch of your old musics on YouTube from the uh, San Francisco International pilot he did. Oh, my God, that's hilarious. Brought back some of the old, some of the old stuff. Oh, my God. That is just insane. All right, anyhow, let's just go on. Dad had quite the body of work. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what am I doing here? Was the last one pobre? Ah. <sighs> Uh, or was it, well, I can do it. I can look at it here and see what it, oh, the last one was, uh, yeah, it was pobre. Let's do some uh, new cheese. Some queso nuevo. Okay. What else did dad do? Dad did a, a short sitcom in the 70s with his friend Hector Elizondo. And it was called Poppy. Yeah, he did that show, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Nostalgia's cracking open. All right, here we go. New viewers. Here we go. Let's see what we got here for the new spinners. All righty. Uh, he's still alive, actually. Let's spin. Okay. Besege Schmeck. You win, Besege Schmeck, if you be here. Besege Schmeck. Okay. There we have a band here called My Dead Girlfriend. Okay. Let's go. My Dead Girlfriend. And the name of this track is called uh, Hades in the Dead of Winter. A lot of death here. From their official website, Shinda Buko Nu Kanojo, or My Dead Girlfriend, are one of Japanese noise pop bands. Currently, the band consists of Ishikawa, Idita, Konishita, Kawakami, and Kunii. Okay, let's do this for some noise pop. Let's see what kind of noise pop we got going on here. Here we go. Does it sound noisy? It sounds kind of cool. Little sprinkle of shoegaze? Maybe? I like this. This is really well done. Especially that just grindy guitar tone in the back. And then the mix up front's a little bit of an arpeggiation. It has a nice delay in it. Yes, very My Bloody Valentine.
Man, some tape saturation on that drum kit. I wonder if the engineer was a drummer. <laughs> you know if you know. Sounds like the master compression. Real sensitive to that kick. I love this part. That pattern going on up here, synthy pattern, with a good delay on it. I think it's great. What's noisy about this is that snare. And the overhead on the drums are <laughs> pretty hot. I love the swimminess of this section right here, but still maintaining that, you know, shoegazy grind to the whole thing. Big rinse on this. Muted everything but the vocals. What a fun listen, man. That definitely, okay, what, was it, what, did, what did it say in the original description? Kind of like a noise pop? Uh, kind of vibe to it, but it sounded, um, it definitely had the shoegaze into it, and that two things actually stood out to me as, if you would, something that would be adjacent, that noise would be the, um, just the whole notes or the, or just the con con continuous connected uh, chords that were played on the guitar that was way just oversaturated, you know, and overdriven on purpose to get that particular sound. Um, and then the other noise actually came with the drum mix, you know, like it had, like it was living in its own tape saturation, like maybe as part of their, you know, group faders master out, 
you know, into the mix before it went into the uh, master bus or, or that that group master out before going into the master bus that it implemented a little bit of tape saturation on it. But also the overhead mics were pretty loud on that. So you were hearing a lot of the nuances of the smashing of the cymbals and the, and the hi-hats that, you know, in some cases and in some decisions, you'd sink that a little deeper in the mix, you know. So, yeah, you know what? Um, a Hender blur. I've noticed that. I did look around once, just open search shoegaze, and I realized quite a few of them showed up that came out of uh, Japan, too. And I see that as far as a movement and a, and, a, and a genre attached to a culture. I see that. That kind of shoegaze connection, you know, really has, you know, cross-cultural connections from around the world and stuff like that just because of the vibe that it gives, you know. Get some mono or Boris. Oh, Boris is another one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. This is, uh, let me see here. Um, 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 uh, this is the last one, guys, because I got to go. So this is queso pobre. Okay. Queso pobre. I don't even know how long I've been doing this today. Like usual, I say, okay, I'm going to do this for a couple of hours, and I think I, I grinded way past that. Let me see here. Okay, are we ready? Oh my God, that is some skinny ass cheese there. Ooh, I've been here for almost four hours. Well, well there I go. Longer than I said I would be because that's just what I do. <sighs> that's just what I do. Okay. Yeah, now we're at string cheese. <laughs> Look at that, guys. When was the last time you see cheesy wheel like that? I need to revel in this for a moment. Uh, yes. Hang on for a second. I want to read what Magic Spark says here really quick. No. Stand by. Added the play to the new because they're content for kids. Ah, oh, yeah. Especially if it's Disney. Uh, I don't think I'd get a copyright strike for the Disney. I think they would just either block. Uh, but if it is kid content... Um, that could be that gray area that YouTube is pretty, pretty hectic on, on their Copa, 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 new regulations they put in about eight years ago, seven years ago. Uh, let me look into this for you, Magic Spark, and then I'll get back to you. You're on Discord, right? If you be on Discord, um, um, yeah, okay, let me get back, let me, let me get back to you on that, Magic. Let's see what we can do, we'll pull off on that, okay? No, it's not the Copa Cabana. Yeah, everybody hated the Copa, 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 whatever, that whole thing. So many people. But, you know, it happens because there's, like, other people out there that take advantage of that shit. So it's just, it is what it is. But a lot of people lost their asses as far as, you know, kids shows and kids stuff. And all of a sudden, they lock off all comments. They like, lock off like features. Yeah, it was, it was pretty gnarly. All right, guys, here's the big spin. Keep your fingers crossed. Ready? One, two, and a three. Here we go. That is such a s thin wheel of cheese. Who's in? Who's in? Hey! I don't see this name come across quite a bit. So this is Hanlon S Slicer. Hanlon Slash. Hanlon. Okay, well... What is it? Hanalon's laser. Does that mean something? Uh, Kairu, what does that mean in, in, in its bigger world? Okay, let's see what you want here. You are the winner. Mm -hmm. We're doing a band called Whisper Records. Well, maybe, maybe that's not the name of the band. Maybe that was not put in right, but stand by. Find out. Oh, I got it. Okay. This is the last track by Henlon's Laser. And uh, the song is from, I guess the artist is Whisper Records, I think. Um, and it's uh, On Board is the name of the song, With Memories. Oh, and the composer is Kujira Shunagi. 
Hey guys, let's do this together. Let's enjoy. Guys, I, is this from anime? It's like Titanic vibes. More of a fiddle approach. Oh, wow, how unique how they're kind of marrying, the composer marries in a little bit of a, kind of a Southern influence. of those of the saxophone when it gets into the lower register. Something to be said about the MIDI style horn playing that actually has its own great life to it. coming to the stream today. This was the Avocado Show. Everybody. Ooh, I like this jump in the arrangement. being triggered because there's something else behind it in unison if you can hear that wow did this track come to life
You notice that that instrument that's playing the lead in the melody has a small zone. You know, it stays within one octave. So the energy is going to be reinforced by the guitar playing and the strings and everything. I feel you, Mr. Roy Roy. Roy you, Roy you. What a great track to end the song on, and I'm end the stream on. Jeez, yeah, you can tell that's when I I gotta go. It's when I can't even speak. I mean, I normally can't speak at the end of my streams. Um, that was a really super fun track. I love the build on it. It started off slow and whimsical and fun, and then as it steps up and stuff, you know, it got really extremely playful. Um, uh, the uh, but it did have a little bit of some of the some of the overdub, some of the lead work, our lead melodic work was. Um, I uh, kind of felt a little, um, like I said, had a little bit of a Southern influence. When I say Southern, I'm talking about United States kind of vibe to it. Um, but it was just a really super track to kind of end the stream on. And I'm glad you guys hung around. I realized I had a, quite a few people here. Um, actually, for me, I think at one point I may have had like 70 or 80 folks hanging out, which is great. Not expecting that on a Saturday. I was thinking I was going to slide in <laughs> and it wouldn't be that crowded. But, um, you know opening myself up to different time zones by getting in early makes a difference. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to try to slide in before Wednesday. All of you know that Wednesday is Wheelie Cheesy Cheesy Wednesday, so that means that it's just, you know, Wheel of Cheese Wednesdays. I might have to sneak in on Tuesday, though, maybe, uh, so I can finish this up. If I can't get in because of my work schedule, then I've got one, two, three, I've got like ten more donos out here. Uh, I might do one of those offline sessions and put it on the YouTube channel, so make sure you're subscribed to that uh, for notifications. And also, finally, I do want to say, um, you know, uh, always count the wins at the end of your day or at the beginning of the day when you wake up, man. Just count the wins, the, as small as they may be. They help you get through the day. So that's my story. Uh, Magic Spark, I'll check into that thing that you asked. Uh, everybody, patty cakes and... And the mods that have been hanging out, even if you're lurking in the background back there, Snake and Turnup. And I know that 1, 1 a.m. came in for half a minute there, I believe. And But everybody, Square Meal, Vex, Crossface Buffalo. Let's see who else, man. I'm just, and all of you lurking in the background, they'll come in and say hi. Thank you so much. Beers58, Mr. Ro Royal Royal. And all of you guys, all you guys, all you guys.